Birmingham in the 18th century. Nothing stood still for long. Change was in the air. The old order was being questioned and thousands of trades were being conducted in hundreds of family-owned workshops. The spirit of experimentation was everywhere and the word new caused excitement, not fear. Men with exceptional minds and sharp intellects were being attracted to Birmingham and the opportunities the town offered. When they arrived, they sought out one another to exchange ideas and to revel in the challenges of invention and discovery. These were men of the real world, businessmen, engineers and doctors, who came together not in places of formal education or fashionable salons, but in homes and taverns to talk, dispute and learn. One such group, the Lunar Society, would become world famous and would be remembered for centuries. They were simply friends who reveled in each other's intellects and who agreed to meet when the full moon would light their way home safely. But what an exceptional group of friends the Lunar Society became. At its heart was Matthew Bolton, who built the world-famous Soho Manufactory. His steam engines supplied the power to drive the Industrial Revolution. He was a modern entrepreneur, full of energy and brimming with new ideas. James Watt came from Scotland to become Bolton's partner in the search to perfect the steam engine. Fretful and meticulous, his innovation would help to make both men very rich. Erasmus Darwin, a well-known doctor from nearby Lichfield, binds the group together. Rotund and jovial, his botanical observations established the foundation of the theory of evolution. Also joining them is Joseph Priestley, the dissenting preacher and chemist who isolates oxygen, but whose radical views help to ignite riots in the town. Other thinkers and friends are drawn to the group. Josiah Wedgwood, the master potter. Dr. William Small, physician and mathematician. The clockmaker, John Whitehurst, who becomes a father of geology. And William Withering, who discovered digitalis. But where do we find these lunar men in Birmingham today? The new lunar trail created by the Modern Lunar Society and Birmingham Museums Trust will show us the way. Let's begin at Sarehole Mill, beside the River Coal, where we can glimpse the world into which the lunar men were born. It was a world where for millennia industry had to rely on the uncertain power of the water wheel. Matthew Bolton had a water-driven metal rolling mill here, but he would devote much of the rest of his life to harnessing the reliable power of steam. Matthew was born the son of a manufacturer of toys, small decorative objects that made Birmingham famous. He was christened in 1728 at the then new St. Philip's Church perched above the old town. St. Philip's later became the city's cathedral to which four magnificent stained glass windows by the great pre-Raphaelite artist Sir Edward Burne-Jones were added. We also find a memorial to Dr. William Small, one of the initial members of the Lunar Society. He was one of the founders of the Birmingham General Hospital, but died before it opened. The Lunar Trail now takes us to Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery, where a permanent exhibition includes the story of the 18th century town in which the Lunar men lived and worked. In an adjacent gallery hangs the portrait of Erasmus Darwin. This hugely likeable Litchfield doctor was at the center of the Lunar Society. Constantly conducting experiments, which he called a little philosophical laughing, Darwin is probably best remembered for his epic poem, The Botanic Garden. In this work and others, he established the foundation for the theory of evolution over half a century before his grandson, Charles, wrote on the origin of species. Leaving the museum, the trail takes us into Chamberlain Square, overlooked by statues of two other prominent lunar men. James Watt is portrayed leaning on the cylinder of his dramatically more powerful and efficient steam engine. It was a concept he developed in Glasgow, 
but he could not find the necessary financial support. As a result, he came to Birmingham to begin a lifelong partnership with Matthew Bolton. Nearby stands Joseph Priestley, shown conducting the experiment which discovered deflogisticated air, or, as we know it, oxygen. Totally absorbed in his work, he directs the sun's rays through a lens onto a crucible containing mercury oxide, from which he collects the gas in an inverted test tube. A preacher, as well as a chemist, Priestley's radical sympathies aroused the anger of the Birmingham mob, and after a dinner to celebrate Bastille Day in 1791, they burnt down Priestley's home and laboratories. Priestley left Birmingham in disgust and never returned. The next point on the Lunar Trail is the iconic Library of Birmingham. Its unique archives include more than 550 volumes of letters, books and accounts from the Bolton and Watt partnership and 29,000 drawings of Watt's painstaking improvements to the steam engine. Meanwhile, the men themselves are portrayed nearby looking at the mechanical drawings of an engine with William Murdoch, a highly skilled engineer and inventor employed by Bolton and Watt. From the statue, the trail now enters the system of canals in which members of the lunar societies such as Wedgwood invested. Bolton and other Birmingham manufacturers used these waterways to ship their goods throughout Britain and across the globe. The trail follows the towpath to the assay office, where silver items received the famous Birmingham anchor hallmark. Initially, Birmingham's thriving silverware trade had been hampered because the town had no assay office. Bolton addressed this issue with typical energy. He successfully organised a petition to Parliament, and in 1773, Birmingham's first assay office opened above the King's Head Inn, and Bolton was its first customer. Its current premises were opened in 1878, and it is now the busiest assay office in the world. Moving across the jewellery quarter, the trail reaches St Paul's Church, where both Bolton and Watt worshipped, and where one of Bolton's senior employees, Francis Edgington, created the beautiful stained glass window portraying the conversion of St Paul. Bolton would have travelled here from Soho House, the fine home he built in nearby Handsworth. Nowhere on the trail do we come closer to the lunar men than in these carefully restored rooms. It was around this table that Bolton and his friends spent many moonlit evenings conducting experiments, debating ideas and marvelling at the newest scientific instruments. Afterwards, letters flew from one to another and were often sent to famous friends overseas, such as Benjamin Franklin, who had visited Birmingham and Soho. Less than a mile from Bolton's home is the Soho Foundry. This was the world's first purpose-built steam engine factory. And from here, they shipped their revolutionary rotary engines to mills and factories throughout the world. Today, the buildings are in a sad state because of damage inflicted during the Second World War. Finally, the trail visits Bolton and Watts Parish Church of St Mary's in Handsworth where they are both buried. Inside the church, the marble bust of Matthew Bolton includes an engraving of the Soho Manufactory, where he produced toys, silverware and ormolu. Nearby is the James Watt Memorial Chapel, with a fine marble statue. But perhaps these are not the finest or most impressive monuments to these lunar men. To find this, we go to the ultra-modern think tank, here we can stand in awe before Bolton and Watt's Smethwick engine, the magnificent machine which helped power the Industrial Revolution. In many ways, this captures the legacy of the Lunar Society. They were a group of friends who were bound together by the excitement of science, driven by the possibilities of new technologies, and immersed in the desire to understand the world and in doing so, they changed our world forever.
So join us on the Lunar Trail here in Birmingham and explore the men who made the modern world. To download a map of the Lunar Trail, visit the History West Midlands website. Free to view films on Bolton and other members of the Lunar Society are also available on the site. You can also register for our free newsletter.